we're going to go nuclear. That's yes. the opposition's pledge, at least, if they win the next election. So as the divisive energy debate rages on, can one American beauty queen persuade Aussies to pivot on power? Your Miss America 2023 is Miss Wisconsin Grace Stanky. She's the beauty queen. Dubbed the new face of nuclear energy, who landed a spot on Forbes' list of most influential energy experts under 30. I thought, man, what a flex it would be to say I am a nuclear engineer. Now, Grace Stanky is touring down under, courtesy of Dick Smith's pro-nuclear campaign group, Miss Nuclear keen to weigh in on Australia's explosive nuclear energy debate. Nuclear power plants are beautiful things. It's a cry of common sense. It is the worst combination of economic and ideological stupidity. They look wonderful. With the election looming, the opposition is pledging to build seven nuclear sites across New South Wales, Queensland, WA, SA and Victoria. Their hip pocket power pitch? A 44% reduction in the cost of energy for Australian consumers. Peter Dutton, his energy plan uh, for nuclear that'll push up prices by $1,200. Enter the CSIRO, Australia's leading scientific organisation, which kindly crunched the nuke numbers twice last year in collaboration with the Australian energy market operator. Yet again, the evidence is in. The findings? A large-scale nuclear plant will take at least 15 years to build cost up to $17 billion a pop and produce electricity twice the price of renewables. The assumptions and the methodology have been disputed before. As for Grace Stanky... It honestly surprises me a little bit that there is such a big debate about this in Australia, just because at least here in America, it's one of the few things our politicians agree upon. So as Australia's energy debate heats up, can this nuke-loving beauty queen change Aussie hearts and mines. Nuclear energy is literally just fancy hot rocks that boil water. That's it. <laughs> well, Grace joins us now. Grace, um, Aussie attitudes towards nuclear is changing, but lots of us don't want to live anywhere near a nuclear reactor. What would you say to change their minds? You know, let's look at case studies of, of actual communities in America that have nuclear power plants near them, right? Most of those communities are actually the most positive people that love nuclear the most, right? They're experiencing the high paying jobs, the millions of tax dollars back into the communities and the 6% lower electricity bills in America. So America and Australia are quite different countries um, in several ways. We're a massive country, very spread out, not that many people in it. You've got people everywhere. Um, and this is where it really becomes an economic argument for us. Um, expert after expert, big institution after big institution saying it just would cost so much. We are starting from nowhere. It's the slowest, most expensive option that we have on the table and would deliver more expensive energy in the long run. Do you, do you accept that it's a very different equation in Australia? I would argue that you're definitely not starting from nowhere. You know, already Australia is mining uranium, so you've got the mining portion of it. Additionally, you're bringing in nuclear submarines through the AUKUS agreement, right? So you're going to be developing that workforce of reactor operators there. There's already a reactor that's creating medicinal isotopes in Australia, too. So there is more of a nuclear knowledge and nuclear workforce that is present here than most people realize. Additionally, when it comes to nuclear power plants, most of the time, the jobs are not specifically nuclear. We still need primarily mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, systems engineers, nurses, firefighters, communications specialists, management leaders, everything. There's really only about five to six true nuclear engineers at every single nuclear power plant and per reactor. So in that capacity, I think Australia is very well set up to build and develop that workforce to help create more high paying jobs for Australians. But Grace, part of the coalition's plan involves two small modular reactors. Given they're not proven commercially viable, is it unwise to rely on those? I think it's something that we need to start looking at all of the different types of small modular reactors, right? Because there are 80 different startups worldwide and we're going to need standardization. 
But the great thing about Australia having that as part of their potential plan is they likely won't be necessarily the first to be building these small modular reactors. We're seeing them under construction in Canada and in other countries across the globe. So in that capacity, it's not going to be a first of a kind when it comes to Australia. Uh, Grace, in the package we saw just there, you were quoted as saying nuclear power is literally just fancy hot rocks that boil water. If that's the case, why was the movie Oppenheim Oppenheimer three hours long? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. <laughs> well, you know, Oppenheimer was not about nuclear power generation in a capacity of electricity. Uh, it was about of a different type of nuclear use. So mm. the introduction of nuclear science was, was weaponry. So it led to a very bad first impression. But that's really only about 5% of the entire nuclear industry. Nuclear offers so much more range from the radiation that's in your bananas that you may eat every single day, uh, all the way to energy that's powering 10% of the globe. Sounds like a wow. fancy banana. And also, yeah, she's a former beauty queen. She wants world peace. I get it. Yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah, that's of course. Yeah. Yeah. Don't ask an Oppenheimer question, Sam. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, Grace, thank you very much for your time. Okay.